All right. Um, let's switch to the slides. This is what's happening here with what we saw. We ran two instances of a microservice. Discovery server returned multiple instances, and then there was a client-side load balancing that happened. How fault tolerance works. Now, what happens if a service goes down, right? So three services registers with the service discovery. Service two goes down. And now client says, OK, can I get service two? Service discovery says, sure, here's where we can find service two. There was this thing which registered five minutes ago and then gives you the address. And then does the client find it? Well, no. Yes. That could happen, right? Because the service starts up and it registers with the discovery server. Now what's to make sure that the service hasn't gone down? The solution is heartbeats. Now what Eureka client does by default is ping the Eureka server on a regular basis and send out heartbeats. It says, yeah, I'm still alive, I'm still alive. And the Eureka server has, a has functionality by default to say if something doesn't ping in a certain time, there is a service interval, if it hasn't gotten a heartbeat in a while, it ends that. It says, OK, I'm not able to find it. It's down. It removes it from the service registry. So it's not just a one-time discovery is what I'm saying. It has to be a constant heartbeat. And that also is managed by default with, um, with Eureka. Now, what if the discovery server goes down? Right? These servers are up, but the discovery server goes down. That's where cache comes into play. It says, can I get service to? Well, I get an error from the discovery server. It picks it up from the cache. Again, this is something that the Eureka client is doing. You don't have to do this. You have not written a single line of code to do any of these fallback mechanisms. It's all happening automatically thanks to Eureka server uh, because of the load balance annotation on REST template. And then it picks it up from the cache. Now, if that service goes down as well, then the cache will not be valid, but at least there is something if that is what is to be alive. All right. So these are some of the scenarios. There's a lot more that happens uh, that can potentially happen. There are things that can error out, in which case you need something like Hystrix to provide that circuit breaker. But um, as far as communication is concerned, communication between microservices, Let's quickly recap what we did. We started out multiple microservices. We had them communicate with each other using REST template and web client with hard-coded URLs. We learned how that's bad, and we don't want to hard-code URLs. So we used a concept of service discovery, created a Eureka server, and had all these microservices register as Eureka clients by adding them to the class path. And then we used the load balanced annotation on the REST template to leverage Eureka server with very minimal code changes. We were able to get all this functionality by having client-side load balancing. We also learned about load balancing. We, we learned about service discovery, client-side versus server-side, and how this is client-side service discovery. Congratulations. With this, you complete the course level one of microservices where we cover communication and service discovery. Where do you go from here? The next steps include looking up the Spring Cloud website for documentation on some of these technologies, and then look out for the Java Brains course level two, fault tolerance and resilience in microservices. By the time you're watching this video, that course might have already been up. If not, I'm in the process of making it. So please subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified when that course is ready and uploaded. I hope this course was helpful. Thank you for watching.